Now, our internet applications have been using a subset of the Java Enterprise Edition API. This uses design patterns as well. The framework sometimes will impose a design pattern upon our applications. And other times we are free to adopt patterns that we want to make use of. Here's one that's imposed as an example, although strictly speaking you don't have to uh, use it, I guess, but uh, um, the way we've been writing our applications, you could say, if you like, that I've imposed the pattern on you without you even realizing it. Now the front controller design pattern will act as a centralized entry point that controls and manages requests. So all the requests come in to the front controller. Front because it sits right at the front, it's the first and perhaps only point of contact for clients to access the functionality that's provided. So the front controller sits at the front, receives all the requests, and then will control the components of the underlying system by invoking appropriate responses to the requests. And of course, that should be really familiar to you because that's what we've been doing with our controller servlets. So we could say then that the control servlets that we've been writing are in fact implementations of the front controller pattern. Now if we were to look at the pattern description, which you can find on the URL that's listed at the bottom of the screen, we'd find that there are certain participants. The client, this is the program, web browser, Java application, whatever it might be, but this is the program that submits the request to the front controller. The controller is the control servlet in our applications. The dispatcher is what will manage the invocation of the other components. And in our examples, uh, the request dispatcher is what the controller has been using to dispatch the request and, and move it on to other components. We also have the view, which of course is our view servlet or view Java server page. And then we've got lots of other classes that are known as helpers that exist to help the controller and the view to do their job. So these will be model servlets, beans, and any other Java class. So you can see then that we have been using the front controller pattern and we have got all the participants necessary. The facade design pattern takes a slightly different approach. This one will provide an interface, a set of methods, that provide high-level functionality. The purpose of this is to minimize communication between the client and the underlying system. We could, for example, if we weren't using the facade pattern, we might find that some application, we'll call A, would have to make several calls. Functionality 1, F1, functionality 2, and functionality 3, and would have to call them in the right order, at the right time, to get the right result, and so on. Now that's all low-level interaction between the client, application A, and the functionality that's provided by the server. Now if we were going to provide a facade, then what we would do instead is have application A talk to the, I'll call it F for facade, and all interaction between A and the server goes via F. And then F will invoke functionality 1, functionality 2, functionality 3, in the right order, at the right time, to achieve the right results. What this does is immediately remove from application A the requirement to know anything about the underlying system that provides functionalities 1, 2, and 3. So we've got a separation now. The knowledge of the underlying system no longer has to be buried in, implemented in, application A. All application A has to do now is just talk to F, and F has got all that knowledge. So we're separating client from server, and that's a good thing to do. And so in a sense, we could also say then that the control servlets that we've been writing are also implementations of the facade pattern because they are the single point of contact for our clients and then they are invoking the necessary components in the underlying system. We could further reduce this, uh, adjust it rather, to reduce the dependency on subcomponents. And we'll perhaps see some example of that a little bit later. In the pattern, the facade pattern, we have got simply two types of participant. We have the facade and then we have the subsystem classes, which in our internet applications are the other servlets, whether they be control, model or view.